like he's healthy. And that spells trouble for their opposition. Grayson Allen, that's the first offensive, unbelievable spark that I've seen out of him. Oh, big time play. Got to get a oh, shot up. He's going to try to get fouled. He drives it. No whistle. And we're back here on the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. It is live radio, folks. Uh, thank you so much, Dick Vitale, for giving us, uh, or bearing with us, we should say, to technical difficulties. Ryan Hickey, Mark Everett, Kelly with you. How are you this morning? I'm doing really yeah, great, man. Just really a lot of exciting college basketball games have been going on and really enjoy what we've been doing and having a passion about what we're doing. And, you know, you've got to have that, Mark. And, and, and certainly you've been a survivor and a, and a guy that's went through hell. And you've done a great job with your life, uh, considering most people would have quit and folded. But I know you a long time, since you're like 15 years old. And I'm telling you, I admire, respect what you've gone through. And I wish you all the luck in the world. Thank you so much, Dick. And uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, I was a... Uh, Dick's Make-A-Wish Child back in 1992. We met at the Final Four uh, when the Fab Five played Duke, and Duke won their first national championship. And I mean, there isn't anybody that does more for pediatric, pediatric cancer. There isn't anybody that has a big heart for children out there who are suffering, for families out there who are suffering. Him and his wife, Lorraine, are, are they're angels. That's, that's the best way I can describe them. And um, that, that's as far as we go back. Anytime I've ever asked anything or whatever, Dick has always been there he's always come through he's, I, 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 I can't really say anything more to say what kind of a great person he is and, and you know, I, I'll, I'll, I'll get a little choked up but you know, Dick thank you so much for, for coming on here and um, no, no problem man yeah. hey I heard you guys talking a little bit earlier about yeah. that great game with Michigan State and my alma mater Seton Hall yeah. what about the kid Miles Powell 37 points mm -hmm. playing great uh, Winston made some big plays at the end. I'm going to tell you right now, Seton Hall is going to be a, a, a real threat as the season goes on. I have them. I'm going to be doing the Battle of the Atlantis. Somebody's mm -hmm. got to do it. I'm going to get paid. <laughs> We're going to the Bahamas to do games. Are you kidding yeah. me? <laughs> Don't call my bosses, Mark. That's stealing money. Yeah. But, uh, we're going out there. They got North Carolina with Cole Anthony, who's as good as it gets, man. He's unbelievable mm -hmm. at North Carolina. We have Carolina. We got Gonzaga. We got Oregon, who beat Memphis uh, with James Wiseman. And we got uh, teams like Seton Hall, all going to be part of the incredible Battle of the Atlantis. So check us out. I'll be doing a semifinal game on Thanksgiving and mm -hmm. championship the next day. And then my wife and I are going to enjoy the beautiful Bahamas, okay. sit poolside, and nice. relax. Yeah, I mean, you talk about upsets. I mean, you saw Michigan State go down uh, to Kentucky. Then you see Kentucky go down to Evansville, the Purple Aces of all teams. One of the biggest shocks. It's like kind of kind of like Chaminade beating Virginia, if, uh, yeah, for those who remember that. I mean, we'll, I could believe that. You know, they were a twenty-four point favorite. Obviously, Kentucky at home. They played well against a good Michigan State team. The kid Maxie was sensational in that game. I had the good fortune to call the game. And, and Kentucky, to me, it looked like their backcourt was going to be probably the best backcourt in basketball. And then all of a sudden, they had that real bad, bad performance at Rupp Arena. I mean, you got to credit certainly the Purple Aces. And it was no fluke. I mean, they they led. I don't know how the exact stats in front of me. Mm -hmm. But I'll bet you in that 40-minute game, they led for about 30 minutes of that game. I mean, they were in control of the game. They controlled tempo and they did they made big shots at the end and made free throws and they left with an incredible win for Walter McCarty who played in 96 was one of their stars for Rick Pitino when they won the national championship yeah I, I, I remember because we, we were talking about a, a game earlier with the Knicks and Heat when McCarty was on the Knicks uh you know McCarty great player for uh, I believe Rick Pitino back then when he was with Kentucky and I mean to go in there and to beat Kentucky I mean to, just to beat them at home is, is a big deal and, I mean, do you think for Kentucky, Kentucky that is a bad sign for them as far as maybe they're not as good as everyone thought? Now, you know what I think happens, too? I, I mean, they take everybody's best shot. you got to be young kids, mm -hmm. and they have to learn that. You know, a lot of these kids have been so dominant on a high school level, and they come to college, and they think it's a cakewalk, and then they go out and beat a Michigan State, and they even think better. Oh, we're really cool, you know. Who's Ev Evansville? You know, it's a psychological thing. But the one thing about John Calipari, He's a master at times like this. Here's where he'll take that loss 
Anybody who thinks they're going to be dead, forget about it. Mm-hmm. Because the bottom line is he will take that loss and he will turn it into an unbelievable situation where he will now get the attention of all the players. He will be in their faces like you can't believe about effort. He will be in their faces about if you want PT playing time, you're going to perform. And he does a great job with that. And I'm telling you, I remember last year, I think I beat like by 50 in the first game. It was a shock mm-hmm. when Duke and Zion Williamson and those guys yeah. beat him by like 50. They might have been 38 or something, but it was it seemed like 50. They put 118 on the board. I know that, Duke. And at the end of the year, he was challenging for a chance to go to the Final Four. Yeah. So, I mean, he's a master at getting the most out of his people, and he's got talent. And when you got talent and you got fan support, you got a chance. Talking with Dick Vitale, obviously just the voice of college basketball on ESPN, legendary broadcaster. Dick, I want to ask you about James Wiseman and, and Memphis, right? To me, I guess the, how I view the situation with his ineligibility is more Penny Hardaway paying for him to come play in his AAU team, and then it just happened that Penny Hardaway got the job in Memphis, and then it just happened to me that James Wiseman went to Memphis. I don't see this as a, a booster relationship or some sort of pay-for-play you know, scam where Penny Hardaway tried to pay Wiseman to come play for him knowing he'll go to Memphis. Do you, how do you see the NCAA, you know, do you think this is a violation? And if so, obviously, he just removed his lawsuit against the NCAA in Memphis, so he'll be sitting out a few games. How long do you think his suspension will be? Well, Mark, let me just tell you this. Uh, there was a major violation. I mean, I don't agree in terms of a lot of the rules of the NCAA because, I mean, they really, many times they suck. They suck big time, I'll be mm-hmm. honest with you. I mean, kids are... are to me, deserve some money, deserve being taken care of and all that jazz and because of their likeness and their image and their name. And they say they're going to move in that direction. I'll, I'll, I'll believe it when I start to see dollars being given out in that direction. But anyway, to put all that in perspective, here's the deal. Number one, when you join the NCA, you're a member institution. you got to abide by the rules. And the rules clearly state can't take money if you're a family taking money on behalf of a kid to move as he did from uh, Nashville to Memphis. And on top of it, he is a booster. Penny Hardaway is a flat-out booster. He gave a million dollars to the university in 2000, I don't know, 9 or 10, I don't know the exact year, but he gave him that to build the Hall of Fame at, at Memphis. So that puts him, uh, defines him as a definite booster, plus the fact, to me, he's associated when he's an icon, he's a legend at the school. So that's a no-no. It's an absolute no-no. However, saying all that, the kid, one, claims he knew nothing about it. Number two, let's not be in the business to hurt kids. Let's help kids. So I'm hoping and praying that after all this goes on between the NCAA and the Memphis people, I was glad to see that uh, the youngster and his lawyers dropped the suit against the NCAA because you don't, you know, you're not going to gain nothing with that. And I think, I think there'll be a, really a, a, a meeting of the minds, and I think the youngster will be declared eligible. I'm hoping he's reinstated uh, for selfish reasons. One, I'd love to see a kid like that play. I don't want to chase kids like that to go to route of Lamelo Ball, mm-hmm. go play in Australia, get a shoe deal, make mm-hmm. make six figures right away, play to forget about college because to me that college experience, even if for one year, it is a great experience. And we we all got such a thrill last year with Zion. Ryan Williamson mm-hmm. and what he did in basketball for that one year just to see him perform. And I, I, I'm selfish, so I want to see James Wiseman, and I'm hoping the NCAA does, does right for him and allows him to play again. I'm with you 100%. Like I said, I guess I looked at it more the spirit of the law rather than the letter of the law. Like you said, right, letter of the law, it's a definite uh, booster relationship. But hopefully, at least the NCAA does the right thing. Like you said, gets them on the court as fast as possible. So going back to that Kentucky loss, like you said, now there's going to be a new number one. You tweeted out your rankings yesterday, a little power change at the top. Duke number one, Louisville number two. What, what is it about Louisville you like so much that you think they're, you know, they're right there at the top? They might be marked the best team in basketball. I'm telling you right now, they're deep, talented. They got an All American, the kid Wara. The kid Sutton is a tenacious warrior on the glass. They got good guard play with Perry, and certainly Ryan McMahon has proven the, that he can shoot the basketball and help in many other ways, too. Passes the ball fairly well. Uh, they got a good basketball team. They got some good freshmen, Williamson. Uh, this is a solid team. I can't wait to see them. I'm doing their game. Uh, I believe it's December 4th I'm doing a game or December 3rd against Michigan. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. I'm also looking forward to seeing Jawan Howard. 
We seem to have mm-hmm. a trend now, former players, yeah. Howard Stackhouse, Hardaway, coming in coaching. And it's a big adjustment, you know, a big adjustment. NBA is one way of life playing and all, but coaching, when you got to deal with the media, deal with your alumni, deal with fundraising, deal with all kinds of uh, other avenues, academics, uh, making sure players are stay eligible. It's a whole different world out there. So it'll be interesting to see how those guys chart out. Hey, Dick, you mentioned the ACC, okay? There are a couple streaks in the ACC that are uh, legendary that are going on going into this year. You have Clemson 0-59 at Chapel Hill. Duke has got a 147-game non-conference win streak at home. Do you see any of those streaks ending this year? Well, you know, they're pretty tough to beat Duke at home and Carolina in those situations. But uh, it's amazing. You know, it's really amazing to me more than so. And we talked about it the other day when I had Florida State or the ACC played against Florida. Florida was sixth in the country mm-hmm. preseason. I mean, everybody's Florida, Florida, Florida. Mm-hmm. Some people say, oh, man, Final Four, definitely. Well, I had them in that game. And really was disappointing in a way, but it's early in the year. Florida State put the hurt on them, and Florida State had, beaten by, had gotten beaten by Pittsburgh. Uh, and then Pittsburgh gets beat by Nickel State. So you figure that out. Mm-hmm. And Florida State came in and really dominated them in the second half and won that game. But the interesting fact there, Mark, is, and i got to get ready to wrap up, buddy, because i got to run. My wife, is we got to plan here. And, okay. but, but the bottom line is, the bottom line is, in that game, Leonard Hamilton is 71 years old. Mm -hmm. And think about this. Krzyzewski, Roy Williams, Leonard Hamilton, Jim Beheim. These guys keep going on and on and on. And I like to be in that category. Now, they got to catch me, man, because I'm in the 80s club. And when you get in the 80s club, that's pretty good. I want to get in the 90s club. Help me out, man. Help me out. Dick, thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. Well, no, hey, Mark, before I go, I, I want to just simply say this again. As you know, better than most, that I'm really obsessed, obsessed with raising money for kids yeah. battling cancer. It means so much to me. So if some of your listeners could hear me, if they can go to dickvitaleonline.com, they can get a raffle ticket on a beautiful new Mercedes convertible, yeah. 2020, $100 a chance. All the money goes to the V Foundation for Kids Battling Cancer, mm-hmm. and we're only selling 1,500 chances. Yesterday alone, I can tell you this. Hmm. I put a thing up on Twitter and Facebook promoting it. We sold 400 tickets. Wow. So we got 1,500 to sell, and hmm. we'll sell that out with no time. Yeah. I suggest that anybody want it, get one now. Just go to dickvitaleonline.com. Great. Thank you, Dick. And again, tireless money raiser for pediatric cancer. No one does it better than you, Dick. Uh, I love you. Thank you so much for taking this time to talk to us. Well, no, thank you, Mark. And I want everybody out there to realize what this guy has gone through. Unbelievable. I mean, I can, can't describe it. He was near, supposedly, when I did a Make-A-Wish, near death. And he's gone around with his life. He's had some tough battles along the way, ups and downs, but he keeps going on and on. Anybody would like to bring him, I'm telling you now, bring him out to an event to speak, to tell his story, it will grab you. His story will inspire you and let you know that your problems are nothing, nothing compared to what Mark went through. So again, Mark, keep going on, be an inspiration to many, and help many like you've helped me. Whenever I think I have it tough, I just think of you, my friend. Thank you so much, Dick. God bless you, and God bless the rain. Tell her I said hi. Take care, buddy. That's awesome. Dick Vitale, again, as you can hear, him and Mark go way, way, way back, not just with basketball, not just with ESPN. Through Make a Wish, just awesome. And again, if you didn't hear, DickVitalOnline.com, helped by a raffle ticket, help support the V Foundation and Kids with Cancer, just absolutely awesome. We talk about, it, you know, for hours and hours with Dick, not just about college basketball, just the great work he does uh, fighting pediatric cancer. And obviously, you can see the work he, he did and, and touched Mark's life. That's just one of many. Um, and it's just, Dick can't be commended enough for that. Um, so just awesome, awesome there just to see that relationship and that connection. Um, so with that, again, Dick Vitale will come back to NFL picks, college football picks. Talk a little Knicks as Chris Asperzingas returns to the Garden and gets a, uh, a pretty rowdy, uh, rowdy ovation, if you want to call it an ovation, or a rowdy welcoming. Uh, so we'll get to that. The Morning Boys, Ryan Hickey, Mark Ever Kelly, Austin Tabitha with you on the Worldwide Sports Radio Network.